This is my bookshelf tour and all the art books that I own. I picked out my favorites that I recommend and then I also put links in the description if you'd like to find them for yourself. So the first books that I'm going to talk about are these. And these books do have some text in them but the really valuable part in these are all the drawings in them and they're really good for copying. The Human Figure by Vanderpool. This is a really great book to copy from. If you are intending to copy drawings from this book, make sure you get the oldest book that you can find, like from the 20s. Vanderpool has a really sophisticated style that I really like, and copying from this book, it really helps to get in, this, get in the headspace of Vanderpool and see how he is using value and line to really express the structure of the human form. The Bridgman books. Bridgman is really good at really simplifying complex forms like the human figure into really simple shapes. Now Bridgman has a blocky and harsh style I would say, and sometimes over exaggerated. And when I study these Bridgman books my end goal is not to have my style look like Bridgman, but I really like to get in the mindset of Bridgman when I'm doing my own style of drawing. Um, I think the, mi the mindset of seeing how different parts of the body connect, move, and you can see cause and effect in the body. And I think that's really valuable to understand and to have that in your mind when you are constructing your drawings or even checking your drawings for structural flaws. Constructive anatomy. This goes into more detail on how the individual body parts are built up, showing the muscles and the bony parts that affect what the artist is seeing when they're looking at the figure. The Book of 100 Hands. Spoiler, it's way more than 100 hands. Like most of the Bridgman books, they have some helpful text, but what really helped me is copying all the drawings in this book. Hands are really complicated forms. Um, when hands look bad in a drawing or painting, it's usually because people make the forms too similar to one another. So this book really pushes at looking at the uniqueness in the forms and expressing the unique planes into simple shapes that you can complicate later. Heads, features, and faces. I find portrait and the structure of the head really challenging, and so like all the other Bridgman books, it helps you to see them in simplified forms and really get the uniqueness of a person, but structure is really focused in this book to really nail the structure of the portrait and the head. And this is the next set of books that I'm going to talk about. These are all materials and techniques for drawing and painting. The Materials and Techniques of Painting by Kurt Welt from Kramer. This is my favorite book on materials and techniques. It is loaded with the best information out there. It's not one of those books that you read cover to cover though, it's more to be treated like an encyclopedia. For example, it has information on every single oil out there for either making paint or making painting mediums. It talks about resins, dryers, pigments, how to stretch a canvas if you want to use tacks or staples. And I am an obsessive researcher, especially when it comes to my passions like painting and drawing. So I like to know about everything that I use, such as how mediums will react chemically, to where pigments are found in the world, or if they're made in a lab. And also a shout out to Demetrius who has commented on some of my videos about the pigment umber, how the cleaning process of umber, or if it's heated up, really changes the color or temperature to be warmer or cooler. Um, and also he explained why Vanderpool reproductions are better in the older books, like I mentioned before, because using a thick cylinder zinc plate rather than the thin floral plates used today could really give you a better image using the thicker, older ones. And I love all that stuff. I think it's fascinating and thanks for commenting and sharing with us all. But anyways, I can't say enough good things about this book and it really enables my obsessive researching problem. Oil Painting Techniques and Materials by Harold Speed. This is one of those books that's a little hard to read because it inspires you to paint and draw, so you keep putting the book down, which is also great. Um, the beginning of this book gives a critique on modern art, and it should be noted that this book was written in the late 80s. A lot of it I do agree with, especially when he talks about stressing the need for excellent craftsmanship. Um, it also talks about the training of a painter, which he breaks up into categories of form, tone, and color. It goes over composition a little bit, which he refers to as design, and also the materials of oil painting. Pictorial Composition and Introduction by Henry Rankin Poor. This is all about how to design your image. It goes over how to balance your image, how your eye reads a painting with entering and exiting the piece, different types of compositions like circular and angular, and how you can use value to really push your composition. I found this book really helpful, um, but after I bought this book I found out that there's an earlier edition of this book which has everything in the one that I have but a lot lot more and it's called Pictorial Composition and the Critical Judgment of Pictures. So I'm going to try and find a link of where you can get that book as well because I think that it's even better than this one. 
And finally, this is the last book, and this is all theory. Kish and Beauty, The Proceedings of the Representational Art Conference 2014, edited by Michael Pierce. This book has the speeches and presentations that were made at the Representational Art Conference in 2014. Most of them deal with how representational art fits in the 21st century. There are a lot of good topics brought up and it gives a lot to think about. Um, this conference is new, 2014 was its first year. Um, they recently held the 2015 conference in November and I hope they publish another book on the speeches given. I really want to go to this conference, but it always seems to fall in my atelier is in session and my school is the most important thing for me right now, so I'll have to wait a couple more years before I can attend. But speeches and presentations in this book are inspiring. They also put out some YouTube videos on a few of the speeches given and I'll link to those in the description as well. And there's a really interesting one that's given by Roger Scruton and on Nerdrum. I made this video because someone requested it, so if there's a video on a certain topic that you would like, please let me know in the comments.